All right, a uh, quick update on how we're going with our uh, kilowatts of free energy system. Um, I have the uh, bowl all turned up, the shaft all machined, um, carrier all in place with the bearings, and um, as you can see, that is beautiful and uh, freely spinning. Okay, so um, this here UB pulley is going on the back of the shaft. That is our motor that will be driving it. Um, I'll be driving off the top of the drum and um, that will give us a 1 to 1.6 um, ratio. So we'll be gearing up from the motor so this will be spinning um, faster than our motor is. Our motor will do 2400 RPM uh, flat out of course our speed controller here and here and um, one of the plates this plate I've got to finish machining um, I've got the centre hole to do yet I have uh, faced off the edge and um, oh, just trot on my camera cord that will be going on here like so bolted on I've already drilled and tapped six six mil holes and uh, we must do the same here so as we can bolt that plate on the face of this drum all right uh, that's uh, how we're going as far as phase one is uh, concerned uh, now I'm going to get myself a little sidetracked and we're going to go and have a look at today's pickup uh, which will be somewhere around uh, phase five of the project but is it, it is the heart of the project. The other thing I need to mention, um, it is funny how people seem to associate over unity devices when you say a free energy device. So um, this free energy device uh, will be giving me energy at no cost. It means I do not have to pay for the uh, fuel to drive this device. It is not an over unity machine driven by some uh, space-time modulated magnetic waves. Um, so I hope that's uh, cleared that up. And um, the end goal is to have zero emissions from this setup, making it a uh, very green system. So there's a whole lot to this system, and that is going to include um, our HHO cell as well. So the system will also be running on um, hydroxy or HHO or whatever you guys want to call it. All right, let's go and have a look at today's acquisition and um, then I'm going to come back into the workshop here and we're going to have a look at the uh, bits and pieces that came with it, um, the heart of the whole system. And I'm going to need a little help from some uh, old timers out there. So uh, anyhow, first we'll go and have a look at the uh, at today's acquisition from the junkyard. Okay, getting a little dark out here, but it looks all right through the camera. What you're looking at here is a Lister Dursley um, from England. It's a, a diesel single cylinder engine. It will come with the crank, and um, it is 3.6 horsepower and runs at around 1500 revs apparently so uh, apparently it is a non-runner but um, upon cranking over the handle when it comes up to compression stroke and see if you can hear this you can clearly hear that it's uh, blowing air out past the valves so I'm thinking tonight's project is to uh, rip the head off, cut the valves back in and um, hopefully she will fire up. Now this little uh, box of levers and arms, of course that one there goes up to the decompression lever. But um, there used to be a unit inside here that's actually missing. And um, of course our governor down here, which is hooked up to this little arm here. Um, just for those that are interested. Now this all has to do with what we're about to have a look at next 
and something I'm hoping I can easily modify. So uh, that's the uh, heart of our project. Good old list of diesel. And I'm guessing most of you guys will be putting this all together by now. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a free energy device in that I do not have to pay, nor would anyone else have to pay for the fuel that's going to run this machine. Um, the only thing that's really involved is time. And um, the whole process will be running itself. Um, this motor here will of course be driving our generator um, and pumps. Um, anything else we need to run will also be pulling the heat off of this engine to uh, heat our home and our water. So uh, this one little three and a half horsepower engine, or 3.6 horsepower engine, is going to be doing a whole lot of things at once on a fuel that costs nothing. In fact, you would be doing the people a favour to take it away. Right, so we're going to go and have a look at um, the rest of this plant that went on the back because um, it is actually before my time and um, I need to clear something up and see if we can uh, modify things a little bit. Right, so what you're looking at is the uh, generator that was bolted onto that uh, lister and it's a Dunlight generator. Um, it is a four pole generator and I can know this because it's got four lots of bolts around it um, and that would be because of the low RPM to get up to your 50, 60 hertz whatever you might be running at. Now there's some odd things about it I hope you can see that plate okay so uh, what I'm looking at here is volts and it has four four volts at 8.3 amps which makes no sense to me 2 kVA 1500 RPMs, 50 Hertz single phase now with this unit comes this UV box that is all plumbed into the generator this is the output that has been cut which goes to the next box where this black wire goes into a generator now this box also says um, in volts 4 so the generator and the box plate say 4 volts now I'm guessing that that is supposed to be 400 or 440 because I've never heard of 4 volts being used as a generator system before uh, haven't opened this box up yet of course but we're going to do that and have a look inside so um, this plate is basically the same as the one on the generator um, so that's obviously a partner with this now there's one more box and this box is a U-Butte Startomatic lighting plant um, registered in Great Britain now I'll give it a quick wide brush hope you can read it um, we have auto hand or push button start and that just clicks from one to the other um, up here we have a reset button which still works and here we have our push start button which has gone AWOL and our nice old amperage gauge which looks a bit cactus right so um, I'm going to open this box and up and rip the lid off of this box so we can have a look inside there and uh, this is where the help starts from the old timers so we'll be back shortly so I've just taken the lid off the uh, yellow box and uh, I thought I would throw this in it would seem that um, the mice have moved in so uh, I'm gonna have to go and give this a really good clean and uh, then we'll be back alright so um, this is the lid off of our uh, generator itself and I see coming from the generator we have a thick black and a thick red wire but we also have these two white wires here and that was what I was hoping to see um, and that would be I guess the um, exciter circuit 
for the generator to crank the magnetic field up. So um, the only problem with that is uh, there's no cap, it's not confined in a uh, generator as they are today. It actually goes over to um, our second unit here that had our uh, mouse nest in it. And um, this is a very old piece of equipment indeed. Okay, so we got our uh, power rail for our wires. A lovely old square cap pressed on lids, probably tinned on there as well. Um, this very big, lovely, large power resistor by the look of it. Um, most of it's uh, rotten, not so good, all rusty and yuck. And um, also have this whatever it is, red thingy on the side with uh, four wires coming off it. If I turn it on its side, it has a small inductor here, um, and that is actually wound in lit wire covered in some soft sort of rope, by the feels. I don't know, it's just standard varnish. Might even be standard wire, don't know. Um, and also down here, we have a large inductor. Um, looks like a toroidal type um, wind around the core. Steel laminated core, which is also nice and rusty. And uh, all wrapped in rope or rag, as they used to do back then. So, not sure what that whole idea was supposed to be for. Um, I would imagine that some of it has to do with uh, firing up this circuit here. Um, but if there's no power coming from the generator, I would also imagine there'd have to be some sort of battery to give it the initial kick um, once it's started up. Another cap here. So that's what's inside this little number. Um, I'll see what uh, resistance that big power resistor is could come in handy. what we have. Basically a rusty old mess. Alright, so I'm going to just chuck this to one side. You can do that while the camera's running. And you'll see we have the uh, big white output wire. And we're going to slide this box here across. This was that Startomatic unit. And uh, there is the wire that comes from that other magic box. It's just been chopped with our uh, two outputs. Okay, so this is what's inside here. This, um, that one there. That was your um, push button start or auto start and stop switch. A big toroid here, toroid core, rag wrapped, wire wrapped around it. Um, a large, um, this actually looks like it's an electromagnet with a huge reed switch on it. And that one there is the reset button, amp gauge, the resistor capacitor, large capacitor, and whatever that gizmo in there is. Looks like a um, another reed switch type setup. Yes, I see the coil down there with multiple reeds on it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Alright, so um, here is the actual wiring diagram for it. I'll try and get that bloody light out of there. Bit of a screenshot job. And that is our circuit that is in the box. That's the best way. So, um, 
here's what I want to do. I want to get rid of this box. And I want to get rid of this box. And I want this to fire up like a normal generator would these days. So, I'm pretty confident that those two wires, these thinner white ones, are for the exciter circuit. One's actually pink by the look of it. Um, you can see a small brown and small green one. That is their uh, terminations. Um, so I'm thinking if I um, can get a couple of small neos in the rotor, fix them in there nice and safely, and get the right value cap across those two wires there, um, we should be able to make this a self-exciting generator. So I've got to uh, pull it all apart first, make sure it's alright, a bit later on down the track. But um, yeah, some thoughts on that guys. Can I do what they do today and just put a couple of Neos in the rotor and um, a cap of the right value, probably through trial and error, across those two exciter windings and um, have it fire up like uh, they do today. Right. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching and um, fun times ahead. The next one, uh, the next video is here, it will be spinning up, um, ready to go and I should also have the uh, motor running by then, hopefully. Hopefully there's no internal damage other than a few cook valves. Okay, we'll see you next video. Cheers.